NRS residing in US are showing keen interest in investing in India now. If you are one of those investors, this video is extremely important for you. US can't force other investment entities to declare compulsory dividends. That's where they made this notorious rule. That means if you don't choose M to M, come to this, we are going to tax you in the highest rate possible during the period of investment. Hello everyone, welcome to Kirti Swin for NRI community. I am CS Kirtana, I live in Dubai and I run The Consultancy, a firm which is specialized in NRI services. I have done my CS from India and CMOS strategic level from UK and I am also a SEBI registered overseas MFT. Every week I bring and explain a video on the topics related to NRIs in this channel. If you are looking for finance, tax, firma and investment topics related to NRIs, please subscribe this channel. Many NRIs residing in US are showing keen interest in investing in India now. If you are one of those investors, this video is extremely important for you. US citizens or residents before planning any investments outside US should be aware of the most important rule PFIC. So I am going to discuss the various aspects related to PFIC in this video. Even those who have moved the funds to offshore investment entities which can be defined as PFICs, they need to understand the taxation in order to avoid paying unnecessary hefty fees, fines, penalties. Because trust me, PFIC tax can go as high as 50% too. So watch this video fully. Don't let your investment plan to turn sour. Remember, tax and investment always go hand in hand. In this video, we are going to discuss four important questions. What is PFIC and why it was enacted? Second, to whom PFIC is applicable? Third, how your PFIC investments are taxed? Fourth, as an RI in US, what you should be doing? This video is brought to you by The Consultancy, an initiative of Kirtis Finfo. The Consultancy is specialized in NRI taxation and investing. If you are looking to invest in Indian market, we can help you. You can book your appointment for 20 minutes free consultation using the link available in our website www.kirtisfinfo.com or using the link available in the description below. Now let's begin. PFIC and why it was enacted. PFIC, Passive Foreign Investment Corporation, they are the investment entities which are outside US and only upon meeting two conditions, investment entity will be defined or categorized as PFIC. First condition, at least 75% of the income generated is passively in the form of dividends, royalties, interest, capital gain, where income stream is completely passive and there is no active work involved to generate such income. Second condition, at least 50% of the funds or the assets are held by investment entity just for the purpose of producing such passive income. So any entity which is meeting these two criteria is going to be defined as PFIC. Now by the very definition you will realize that many Indian ETFs, mutual funds will automatically fall or come within the bracket of PFIC. Take Indian mutual funds for example. These are pass-through vehicles. The business activities intend to generate capital gain or dividend which is of course passive income. The same logic applies to the ETF also. But here there is a catch. You should remember ETFs listed on US market, they are not going to be categorized as PFIC. Only outside US will be termed as PFIC. And even the startup companies which are incurring loss and survive on the passive income, they may end up becoming PFIC. REITs or real estate investment trusts which earn income by invest in real estate assets are also so going to be considered as PFIC. There is no primary active business for these entities. Now let's see why this was enacted. In 1986, in order to keep the investment by US residents or citizens within US, it had been enacted. IRS was very intelligent enough to predict all kind of loopholes and try to plug in all the loopholes. That's where they thought, what if US investors are investing in foreign funds? They don't encash any interest or dividend out of it. Basically, they are investing in growth funds and they use these vehicles to defer the taxation. 
Till the point of sale, US can't force other investment entities to declare compulsory dividends. That's where they made this notorious rule. They decided to bring even the notional gain arising from such offshore investment as taxable income for all US persons. By making all reporting requirements, tax rates extremely burdensome, US has created a system where it completely discourages its citizens, residents, green card holders from investing or moving the funds outside US. Because, see here, if you invest in Indian mutual funds, they are going to be categorized as PFIC. If you invest in a fund which is incorporated in US that gives you exposure towards Indian market, then that doesn't become PFIC. So the place of incorporation matters, though ultimately the structure is same at the end. Second point is, to whom it is applicable? As I have been mentioning frequently in the previous explanations, US persons, that means US citizens, green card holders, residents who have spent more than 182 days in US. This PFIC rules apply and also remember the threshold income level for attracting PFIC is $25,000. That means if the income made from such offshore investments crosses this threshold limits, it is going to be considered. Third point, how your PFIC investment is going to be taxed? Broadly, there are two categories. One is M2M and second one is deferred method. And I'm going to explain in the simplest words possible for your better understanding. See, in case of US-based mutual fund, investors get taxed on the capital gain when he's going to sell it off or at the point of sale. Whereas, if the same US person is investing in what is categorized as PFIC, the rule changes. Before the point of sale, you may incur tax liability. In case of M2M, without even selling, yes, all distribution. Dividend declared by the funds is definitely going to be taxed as ordinary income. I know you are confused, right? How come when I don't have any gain, it becomes your ordinary income? Capital gain by definition means the gain which you are going to receive when you are transferring or selling any capital asset. Here, in our case, it is mutual funds. And I know that they are fundamentally different. Dividend is income by way of distribution. Capital gain is not ordinary income, but IRS says, if at all there is a capital gain, we are going to consider as if it is your ordinary income and it is going to be declared when you are going to file your tax return in US. So, capital gain won't be eligible for any preferential long-term capital gain rates. It will be clubbed as if it is your ordinary income and it will be taxed every year in case if you are choosing M to M or mark to market. I know you are thinking, what if we don't buy dividend declaring funds? What if we keep investing in growth funds where there is no cash flow? Even in this case, the notional profit is also going to be taken by IRS. If you have invested 1 million rupees and it has yielded 15% return or capital appreciation, which you haven't essentially got anything in your pocket, but there is a notional profit of 150,000. That means this will be considered as your ordinary income and you will be paying tax each year. This is called M to M or mark to market. You are marking to market. So to sum it up, though you haven't sold or though it is just a notional profit, it is going to be clubbed in your ordinary income for tax purposes under mark to market method. The second method is deferred method and it is also called excess distribution method. If you choose this, deferred gain in your PFIC will attract non-deductible penalty and compounded regularly as long as you have deferred it. I know it is very complex but remember what is happening here is your earning is compounded outside US as well as the penalty within US. So enjoy double compounding. Now imagine what interest and penalty you would actually end up accumulating at the end of the deferral period. That means if you don't choose M2M, come to this, we are going to tax you in the highest rate possible during the period of investment. Not me, IRS say so. And here, it is taxed at the highest federal marginal tax rate plus interest accumulated over the years which will easily add up to 40 to 50 percent because this is excess distribution method where tax is deferred till you sell of your PFIC. There is some dividend distributed. The second method of taxation is called as excess distribution method where tax is deferred till the point of sale or till you sell off PFIC or there is some dividend distributed. The calculation is really complex. The sale proceeds and the distribution 
to the extent that the total amount during the year exceeded 125% of average distribution received in the past three years. So IRS is going to take this excess distribution, spreads it over the investment horizon or period on pro rata basis. So out of no choice, it is obvious that selection for PFIC taxation by any logical person would be mark to market where you are marking the gain or the loss to the market. So realized and unrealized gain total together will be added to your income and treated as if you have earned it as an ordinary income within US. Who wants this penalty interest accumulated under excess distribution method, right? At least in M to M, as the name itself suggests, this is mark to market. That is technically you should be able to set off the notional losses too in this case if they arise in a given financial year as per my logic definitely this method mtm scores high over deferred method though irs says it has enacted the rules to plug in the loopholes of the tax loss i believe it is going to create a big hole in investors pocket if investment is done without understanding the tax implications the last question as an ri in us what you should do remember not declaring is never a good idea because i have seen many clients saying that we don't declare these days information is shared freely please don't do this mistake it can cost you heavily in the coming days. PFIC rules are generally complex in nature and even the computation is not easy. I wanted to do this video just to give you an idea that before moving your funds outside you have to do cost benefit analysis weigh your options carefully. So please get in touch with any local tax practitioner or financial planner who is well versed with this computation loss before moving your funds outside US. So the whole equation of the game or the plan just doesn't turn against you later. I hope you have learned something new in this video. See you with another video. Till then, bye-bye.